which means that people are willing to pay more for properties that they weren't willing to pay for before. So now we're going to run to that. I think we're going to run to that same situation over the next three to five years, which again, then there's more equity for if you buy right now, right, which is what we're doing buy smart deals right now, you're going to be half, you're going to be able to take advantage of that equity game. But at the same time, everything's going to get more expensive. We're headed towards that route. You need to understand what Freddie Mac has just proposed because it is coming. What did Freddie Mac just do? They just talked about releasing or buying second mortgages. Why is this important? Well, according to Meredith Whitney, it could unlock potentially one to three trillion dollars. And folks, if we've learned anything over the last couple of years, releasing that kind of money into the system is going to reignite inflation. We're going to have this conversation with Convoy Home Loans, Dustin and Jonathan. Guys, what do you think? Second mortgages, is that uh, is that coming? It's, uh, I mean, we think it is because obviously second mortgages up until this point have kind of been privatized, right? Whether it's yeah. with the bank or whether it's with, you know, Wall Street funds or whoever that offers, you know, those types of loans. And like you said, reignite inflation. It's It's almost as if they, everyone is just on the same page about trying to do things to stimulate the economy, you know? Yeah. And um, and every move that everyone's talking about to stimulate economy is leads to higher inflation, right? Which is the number one enemy of the feds right now. So it'll be interesting to watch um, how the reaction is and how it actually passes and goes into play. Because if we remember two years ago, we were talking, or a year ago, we were talking about FHA 40 year fixed mortgages that were, I remember. Like they were, and everyone was freaking out about that too. To, you know, they were like, we're going to get 40 year fixed mortgages. And we were like, that's not the case, right? Yeah. Um, it, I feel like, I hope it's not kind of the same thing where this actually does allow, I think, a little more liquidity to happen. Uh, but at the same time, it's not going to be for everyone, right? Yeah. The thing that I think about this, guys, is, you know, the you know the Fed and Jerome Powell, he sees this headline and he's saying all kinds of cuss words in his head. These mother blankers, blah, 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 blah. Because again, right, he's trying to get his foot on the brake to stamp out inflation. And then you got yeah. Freddie Mac over here, another, you know, government, I don't know, entity or whatever you want to call it, um, basically unlocking the tap. It's like, what are you guys doing? You're not on the same page. No, it doesn't, uh, you know, obviously help Powell's stance and what he's trying to communicate oh. to the markets. Um, but there's always that battle between, you know, the markets and the feds and uh, your average consumer. But you know, the biggest thing that I think John and I discussed last week when you sent us this was the fact that we know that Fannie and Freddie or any of these, you know, government sponsored entities, FHFA, you know, VA, et cetera, they're always one, two years, maybe three years late to the party on what yeah. Wall Street is trying to roll out or what we on the, we'll call it non QM side, always try to get, you know, in front of the consumer first. And I don't think it's going to be something that, you know, uh, they're going to have a hard problem uh, using and deploying that money if they actually do, because there's so many people right now, you know, that are trying to get a Fannie or Freddie back second, because right now, like John said, the only option is going the private route. And, you know, believe it or not, the private route knows that they're only, uh, you know, player in, in the space and yeah. they can charge a little bit higher because of that. So that should actually, I think, uh, maybe bring the private side of seconds down in terms of rates. Oh, Cause now they've got absolutely. competition. Yeah, they got competition. It's amazing. It's amazing yeah. how competition works. Let's just try to put some numbers on it. I know these are not quotes. These are just rough numbers. Would it be, I'm going to, I'm going to guess you can just tell me if I'm wrong, kind of a private second today. You're probably double digits, right? 10, 11, maybe 12 on that. Yeah. If, if we're, if Freddie Mac's coming out with something, it's going to be priced lower. It will likely be single digits, right? Probably yeah. still nine, but single digits. Is that reasonable? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I don't think it's uh, even crazy to say that it might be in the eight with an eight yeah. handle. Um, just yeah. because obviously it'll be full income qualifying. There'll be mm -hmm. their own little like, you know, measures, but I think eight handle is pretty realistic. And um, just because I know that they also don't want to, you know, they're a conventional product. So right. they're not going to be bumping up the rates two, three points above, maybe at match prime or something like that. Right. Yeah. 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 I like it. And then the other thing a lot of people might be wondering is 
why are these institutions doing this? And I don't think a lot of people have the insight that you guys have. They're starving, right? They're, they have built businesses on doing loans. And we have had transactions south of $4 million, uh, for quite a while. And if you take out the cash buyers, it's even less of that. Um, so these institutions want to keep, you know, keep the paying the bills, if you will, overhead. So they have to create a new product. And frankly, they created the market, right? We had three years of low rates. Everybody's fixed. Now everybody's locked in. You know, they got to keep the lights on. So this second product will help them do more business, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the Fannie and Freddie government sponsored entity, they're, they're a business too, right? And every business has to deal with innovation and, and trying to find a new way to survive in the new market. And like I said, they're a little bit late, but it's something that I, I would be very surprised if once they rolled it out, that they would have issues getting any sort of demand on that money. Yeah. Uh, is it fair to say, again, I'm a complete outsider of this, this part of the market. Uh, is it fair to say if Freddie Mac makes this happen, that FHA and VA will just quickly follow suit? Or is that not a good assumption? Uh, I think they'll try. Right. Um, and the reason I say try is because typically everyone that does FHA and VA is higher leverage, right? Meaning okay. higher LTV. So there may just not be enough room for a lot of those people to be able to tap into that. You know, equity. Okay. what I imagine happening is, you know, people with an FHA can't get a Fan Freddie or Fannie Mac second. I assume that it's probably going to be like you have to be in a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac own loan to do a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, whatever second Correct. loan. Um, mm -hmm. So you, it's, it can't be a mix and match. FHA, VA, again, typically those people are buying with three and a half percent or even zero percent down. So okay. I don't assume that they'd be able to come into market with an aggressive second. And if it does okay. actually come in the market, uh, I mean, they currently still have like down payment assistance programs available, which is technically kind of like a second loan to help buy properties. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that they rush into the market to be able to do that because their their people are different. Right. The, the people yeah. that they're trying to market to is different. I like that. I like that. Wise advice. I love having you guys on the show. You see, you see around the corners. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, I am curious, right? When you look at your entire book of business, the last year or so, how many conversations or what percentage of conversations were about equity extraction, right? Because that's really what we're talking about here with Freddie Mac is, is equity extraction. Were a lot of people looking to do that? Was it more or less than you thought? I mean, what's going on? What are, what are people looking to do today? Yeah, I, I, without actually having the hard data in front of us and writing the numbers. Now, keep in mind, our numbers might be a little bit skewed because a lot of the times we are dealing strictly with investors. And a lot sure. of the investors that come to us are getting out of some sort of bridge, hard money, construction mm. loans. Naturally, they're getting equity extraction because of the new ARV compared to the purchase price that they got. That probably skews our numbers. If we threw that out, though, and we were only talking about refis from a, an existing loan where they didn't do any rehab to the home or their primary residence, I wouldn't say there's more than in that class that I just went over. Yeah. 20% uh, of the, you know, refis probably trying to get some sort of equity extraction, but then overall, you know, our book of business, the amount of cash out refis we're doing is still probably close to 40 or 50%. Okay. Yeah. The reason I ask is, um, the more and more I play with this, just given the, you know, got to be a Freddie Mac first, right? To get a Freddie Mac second. I think about, you know, the max LTV at 75%. So they're putting in the right kind of guardrails. So we don't go back to our houses being an ATM machine and take it up to a hundred. Um, I don't know, man. I, I think this Meredith Whitney call of a trillion dollars of liquidity coming out by the summer, by August is, I just, I don't know that I can do the math to get there. That seems pretty wild to me. I think the way that she's also potentially adding it in, I, I think the they are also factoring in the fact that if the rates potentially go come down a slight bit, right? Mm -hmm. And oh, there's a lot of hopeful people still on hopium that are hoping for that to happen, right? That's three yeah. hopes in one sentence, right? <laughs> Um, Three hopes in one sentence. That's the yeah. hope. Uh, yeah. They they uh, are assuming that obviously if that happens, and I think it's no secret that prices will increase. And if there's an increase in prices, then that'll unlock more equity that didn't exist before. Um, and I've I've personally called for an almost like an equal amount of equity growth, potentially if rates come down from this higher point in the next three to five years, then, you know, as the same as the last three years, which was after COVID, right? 
So I think the same type oh, of wow. thing will happen potentially. And I think if you if you think about that, then obviously there's going to be the math kind of then makes itself a little easier to math out. Yeah, no, I, 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 that, let me just say, uh, Jonathan, I am not speechless very often, but you just gave me the shivers. And yeah, like, indeed. just think about that, right? We got 30% appreciation. Let's just use a round number the last three years. And I think what you said was if rates come down, let's call it six and a half, six, you're thinking that we could see 30% again in the next three years. If you know, that's, that's three ifs that's if, if, yeah. and if I don't, I don't think it's impossible because yeah. Okay. Everyone's now used to seven, eight percent, right? Exactly. You're so, so right. Yes. And and ev the demand is there, right? I mean, Jerome Powell really tried to slow down the market. It he didn't did. slow down. Right. <laughs> so if that's the case, and we know that everyone is still wanting to buy, right? The American dream is still real. Mm -hmm. People are gonna drive up prices if rates go down to six and a half, six. We saw this actually in place when people were making crazy offers. Uh, remember. You remember, like I, December, I January, when rates took a little blip down, like maybe half a percent. It went from seven and a half to seven to under seven, right under seven. I remember, and I remember. people started going crazy on the offers, and they were writing offers that were again kind of reminiscent of right after COVID times with the prices being 100, 200K over asking, right? Um, wow. and, and listings that were sitting stale, we're starting to get offers again, which means that people are willing to pay more for properties that they weren't willing to pay for before. So now we're going to run to that. I think we're going to run to that same situation over the next three to five years, which again, then there's more equity for if you buy right now, right? Which is what we're doing. Buy smart deals right now. You're gonna be half. You're gonna be able to take advantage of that equity game, but at the same time, everything's gonna get more expensive. We're headed towards that route. Yeah, I mean, I just did a keynote presentation up in Portland uh, over the weekend, and I tried to communicate both to the room and also the the private VIP section that we we need to be hoping for rates staying in the sevens, so the market could slow down and it could heal itself. If to your point. You know, we suddenly take a big spike to six and a half because unemployment jumps to four two or something. Um, things can get bananas again. It really could, and um, I hope people realize that. Just only, just keep doing the work, do great deals. Um, I guess the other thing I wanted to talk about with you guys is, is the commercial market. I, I still think commercial lenders are largely out. Like commercial banks are largely out. I think a lot of them. If you guys hear from billionaire Barry, right? Barry Sternlicht, he says we're going to have one bank failure a week uh, through the rest of the year. I think that's a little high, but we will have more bank failures because their balance sheets are in tatters. If they over-indexed on San Francisco office, for example, you can't come back from that. So we have a lot of we have a lot of pain coming to some of the commercial lenders. Do you guys are you guys hearing in the tea leaves about more stress in the banking system or not really? Yeah, I think it's a um, it's a two folded parted question for me and John particularly to answer. As everybody knows, we do focus mainly on the residential side. Now we have a sure. you know commercial division that does everything commercial, but there is a little bit of a you know overlap between the lenders that we use on the residential side as well as the commercial side, and we actually have seen more so of the lenders that were we believed we're going to get hurt on the commercial side just because of the, and, and I'll take a step back. Like when you're doing a commercial loan, right? The lenders and the underwriters are going to base this simply off of the cash flow to determine the value, right? Correct. It's yeah. a lot easier to cash flow when rates were at two or three, when they got these five-year fixed notes in 2020 yeah. and 21. But now all of a sudden we can see, as we saw in the San Francisco office uh, space that you just alluded to values on a hundred million dollar property can get cut in half to 50 mil. Oh, right. And when you get a loan that was at 60% LTV on 100, and now all of a sudden the property is worth 50, what do you think is going to happen? It's a big, uh, big problem. You know but, exactly what's going to happen. Here's the keys, Mr. Bank. Yeah. Um, but the residential side doesn't have that problem, at least, Not right? Today. We still underwrite the value, at least on sales comparisons, not using the cash flow to determine the value. Um, but to go back to your initial question, I do think there's a lot more hurt. And I feel bad for those that are strictly in the commercial space on their side. 
than in the residential because the residential banks and lenders have kind of weathered the storm. Oh, We've they're went done, through yeah. it, we know what's coming. We've priced it in even up to nine, 10 percent. We've seen how it's rebounded. And, yep. uh, you know, ultimately, the investors on the residential side feel a little bit more comfortable lending on residential than commercial right now. Yeah, and you can really see that in the spreads. I mean, we talked earlier in the year, maybe it was last year, spreads were like 310 basis points. Now they're like 270, 265. So even mm -hmm. the spreads are coming in and rates are getting better. You know, that can go to our, our next. I mean, we literally yeah. had this happen exactly what you just brought up about a week ago when we were at 4.7 end of April. And now yeah. that we're at 4.4, 4, but our margins and our spreads I mean, you can go on. on yeah, so I, I mean, you can talk about the residential side. I just want to talk about the 30 year fixed commercial. Like, um, so up to like nine units right now, what I'm seeing more than before mm. is, especially in the smaller balance market, that yeah. properties like nine units below that five to nine, I guess, that don't fit inside the Fannie Freddie box, mm -hmm. right? And yep. then they have to go, they have to go bridge loan or something, right? Mm -hmm. For those people, I'm seeing a lot of them actually revert to our products of a residential um, loan, the mm -hmm. DSCR, just okay. because they can lock into a 30-year fix at maybe like commercial commercial apartments are like maybe six and a quarter, six and a half-ish right now yeah. on mm -hmm. a five, seven or 10-year. They're all pretty much the same because of the, the inverted yields. But mm -hmm. we're seeing a, a lot of these like, you know, nine units, eight units start being underwritten on a 30 year fixed side at nice. like, I don't know, high sevens. Right. And you're, you're trading, you're trading off one and a half percent, but you're trading off one and a half percent for one fixed, right. Fully amortized or interest only, or you're also trading it off for the certainty because That's if something exactly happens right. yep. in the market where the banks are starting to do what we're talking about and, you know, it's like bigger picture stuff, right. Where you're looking mm -hmm. past the current status of the market where, hey, I can actually get maybe a percent and a half less if I go with a bank at Fannie Freddie and, you know, do 60% LTV, or I can just do maybe 65 or 70% LTV with this non-traditional product, but yep. I can lock in for 30 years so that I can make sure that no matter what happens in the market, my property is not affected and yeah. I can calculate out what it would be going forward. And if rates drop five years down the line, then great, you're you're ecstatic because then you just go back to where you were doing previously. But mm -hmm. if the market continues to be volatile, because we don't know the true effect no. of which property and asset types will be declined from commercial lending going forward, right? Because of the kind of the waves of what's happening. So I've seen a lot of people lock in with us on a 30 year fixed note under a million dollars to show up to nine units on a deal like at like high sevens, which is not a bad deal. No. Right, especially on a, you're still cash flowing very positive, but you have that sense of certainty and you're looking at a bigger picture. Like, I know that the rates higher I'm getting right now, but at least I'm not betting on the market to be better in three years or five years, even if you because if you have to go to a bridge route, it's two to three years max, like on a commercial. So, after that, what are you going to do if the market's not improved? Right. Yeah. So, this allows you to kind of still lock in on the longer term. That's what I've been seeing a lot actually going to that topic of the banks failing just because they are, yeah. we're moving over for a little bit leverage on, on our side. Yeah. No, I think that's very why. I mean, if you're an investor out there and you have a five to nine, I would, I know I certainly would go get 30 year money. I've been in environments where the term comes up at the wrong time. Uh, there's people now going ca like cash in refis. Right. We we like to talk about cash out refis, not cash in refis. And that's coming in a big way uh, to a lot of commercial uh, brokers. If somebody wanted to reach out to you guys and see what's what if for their situation. How should they do that? Go to convoyhomeloans.com and let us know you came from Orat. And then um, we just wanted one more thing on go for DSCR it. for the go one for to fours that Dustin can go into. Um no, it was it was uh, basically end of last week. Everybody was a little bit scared just because of, you know, where are we going to get to five on the treasuries? Where are we going to get yeah. to four to eight, four, nine? Um, and it was kind of a uh, a good timing for us because when we saw it cross four, seven, we tried to negotiate with our investors that buy our loans from us on Wall Street and said, hey, we need to get the spread down between the rate that we offer and where the treasuries were at, right? Okay. So we got that basically reduced like 20 or 30 bips. And then, of course, the treasuries went down 20 or 30 bips. So <laughs> from last week till now, we basically got like a, a 50 basis point drop nice. in on all of our like DSCR bank statement stuff. So it's been pretty nice for the last couple of days. 
Nice, nice. Again, folks, Convoy is always investing, always looking for new products, always looking for new ways to help you. And that includes negotiating hard with Wall Street types. Uh, again, go to convoyhomeloans.com. Let them know you came from ORAT so you get one of these two fine gentlemen. Otherwise, you will end up in a queue. Nobody likes to be in line. Let's go to the guys at top. Thank you so much. Later. Thank you. Yeah.